So hello, my friends, and uh, welcome to What's Up. This is a program from the Arlington Institute, and we get together every two weeks with our friend Greg Braden to uh, talk about whatever's on our mind. And so, hi, Greg. Nice to see you. What's up? Uh, John, it's good to see you. Uh, I missed uh, one or two of these. I have been in book writing mode. We just pressed send. Uh, the manuscript is with the publishers. They are fast tracking this book. It will be in the warehouses hardback version by December of this year. That's pretty fast. Wow. Tracking. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And I'm excited. So I'm, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I, I took a, a drive. I was inspired by your driving cross country. You and I <laughs> met, you and I met in Albuquerque with Penny and we, we did the conference, the Tesla tech. And uh, I had an event with Dem with uh, Bruce Lipton, Denver, Colorado, and I opted to drive. And it gave me some time to, much needed time, to listen to my favorite 60s rock <laughs> <laughs> on, my, on my playlist and really think about what's happening in our, our country right now. I was focused more on our country than the world. And obviously the elections on, on everyone's mind. And from my perspective, the system is broken. Uh, it is. It has been abused to the point that it is broken. And I, I was asking myself, what is it that has led to to this system to become as broken as it is today? And what was really clear to me, John, is, and this is all parties are casualties of this, with no exceptions, is that we have allowed topics of conversation that are important in our lives to become presidential topics that have, in my opinion, that have no business being part of, of a presidential election. The big one, abortion is important. We need to talk about it. It affects a lot of people's lives. It's not a presidential issue. Gay rights, not a presidential issue. I mean, these are the kinds of things that, that are tearing the fabric of our families, our communities, our society, and our nation apart and so I went back and looked at Article 2 of the Constitution. What is the role of a president? And it's actually a very limited role. And what I began to understand, John, I've been with a lot of young people recently since I've been doing live events again. And it's apparent, number one, the young people do not understand how government, how our government works. They believe we live in a pure democracy, majority rule. They, uh, they believe that a president is like a king and can mandate things to be so. And, and that's the whole idea of our country is that it was designed not to have a king. So I, I, we can talk about that, but where this led, John, there's a new world emerging. There's a good possibility that America as 50 contiguous, well, 48 lower contiguous states will not survive uh, as a unit. That means new, something new will emerge and the question that came to me is, do we need a president? That's an interesting and important kind of question. And it's really seminal because contributing factors to this disruption and the subsequent reintegration uh, have the potential of dramatically changing the organizing ideas uh, around what this new world is. Uh, or the new countries or what, whatever entity you're looking at. And so the issue of government is a very interesting one because there is, uh, we may not need government that looks anything like what we have now. Um, yeah. We may not have a, a, a single leader and you may not want a single leader. Exactly. Maybe the the values changes, the ideas that uh, show up in this new space uh, are more like the Native American way of kind of cooperative. There are a lot of predictions out there that come from, if, if it was a single source, I would tend to discount them. I'm hearing it from so many different sources, predictive models. This may be the last election that the United States, as we know it, has because the system is so broken. I'm gonna take a half step back and then I'm gonna take a big step forward. I wanna go back to what I said initially because I know a lot of people hear sometimes what they wanna hear. Uh, the topics 
that are the, the dividing topics. I am in no way denying their significance. They are important. They're, they're powerful social topics that we need to discuss with kindness and resolve uh, as, as communities and, and as a nation. In my opinion, they have no business determining the outcome of, of an election. Uh, reparations is, is another one. But what's happened, John, is people have been led to believe that their personal interests should determine the outcome of the most powerful leader of arguably the most powerful nation on the planet with the most powerful military based on their personal needs, discounting the existence of the nation itself. Things like borders, things like the economy. The president's job is to keep the borders intact, keep the economy healthy so that we can thrive and have these conversations. And that is not what young people are, are seeing as a president. They're seeing a president as their personal savior for their individual issue. So when I'm, I'm thinking about this, now there are other people out there that say this will be the last election of a human president mm -hmm. and that we will be under the authority of, of a very advanced form of AI that is rules-based. The Constitution could very easily be rules-based, but I believe we don't want to exclude the human element uh, because of because of that, because of, of the human element. So I'm, I'm not suggesting that we go to any kind of an AI-based form of, of government, but I don't know that we need, I am doubting that we need a single individual. And I think, you know, we talk about people that have had experiences, ET abductions, for example, if if they're truly abducted against their will, or or clairvoyance, or uh, people that have had interactions with life from beyond this world. They still have a form of government, but the government is done not by an individual typically, but by uh, by a committee, by by a group. And that group, there are very specific parameters that divest that group from conflicts of interest. So money is not in the picture. The wisdom of an individual that can give insight, but not vested with the power uh, that we want to give to, to a president. And I, I think we may be the generation that's looking at this, John. I mean, this is huge. Well, sure. We, but, it, you know, it, it is what it is because it's been manipulated and shaped and, is, you know, it's the byproduct, it's the product of the past. And and that there's a huge effort has gone into trying to influence and drive that in a certain direction. And Martin Armstrong talks about next year's starting of a global civil war and by 2027 you starts the the united states is starting to break apart and you end up with five different countries in north america going reconfigured going into 2032 any of yeah. it, i mean you and i ought to start our own country maybe and then we could have all <laughs> kinds of new ideas and new values and other kind of stuff well but does each of those countries have a president and if if, it, if so, know. does the pre, does does the role does the role of that that person is it what it is now? Here's and here's the part, John. That to me, it's very sad because the breakdown of what had the potential of being a beautiful system and and has been in the past. So much of the system was based on trust and integrity, and. It was based upon freedom, and the irony is that the very freedoms the system protects have been used to turn the system against itself. What is the remedy? How, how do you prevent the freedoms from being used to destroy the very system that the freedoms stem from? How, uh, how do you I, do that? I always go back to Willis Harmon and global mind change and his notion that says that you know, I got any kind of major kind of global change is only going to happen as the as you get a mind shift uh, and that that has got to be the basis of it. So yeah, in terms of a conversation like this, you can't presume that you're operating with the same 
a set of values and structures and assumptions about how it's about human nature and how systems work and so on. You, you've got to kind of logically jump into a space that doesn't work the same way that it does here. I mean, that's the way this, why the system mm -hmm. collapses and rebuilds because it does, it, it's not, uh, so it doesn't support it's a, it's a, the whole the old ideas the old institutions the old framework doesn't support us an emergent new set of ideas so I don't know exactly what those are but uh, what I what I know is that you cannot consider those kinds of issues I mean this is how where I got into trouble with a mutual friend of ours once who very interested in whole integrate integral systems and so on and tried to set up different groups or initiatives around integral art and integral medicine and integral health care and whatever and government and they invited me to come and be a part of a small group about in, integral government and after about a day of it i said to this small group i said you can't talk about integral government without talking about integral everything because everything's tied together and it all floats and so you don't have an integral government and not an integral econ economic system the whole things have all got to go well how does that happen you got a mind shift and so that you get new imagery and new ideas driven by value value shifts and other kind of thing and perspectives and expanded awareness about how reality works and so on and that then means that you've got an or a set of organizing ideas that are really different so what i'm hearing from you john is it is almost inevitable that this system that we have has to to change uh, because just because of, of the things you're saying. In other words, we're not going to fix the system that we have right now and go back to anything that we knew 30 or 40 years ago. No, no, this absolutely. System, and I you know, mean, and that's uh, kind of the difference between what we try to do here at the Arlington Institute and other people and other kind of so called think tanks is that they're all trying to fix fix the present system. And I have long ago came to the conclusion that it's uh, uh, irreparable. Uh, there's no way in order to fix it. And so what you ought to start doing is spending your time thinking about what the new world should look like. How do we build a new set around a new set of principles? Because this is not, nobody's going to fix this thing. This is crazy. Well, you know, this, I agree, John. And, and what we're talking about, I have been surrounded almost my entire life by people who always wanted to separate and believed it was possible to separate politics and government from everyday life. When yeah. in, in reality, it's, it's the politics and the government that give us the parameters within which we have the freedoms to live our everyday lives. Where I think this is, there's this beautiful place where policy and politics and science and spirituality all come together. Yeah. We're, we are discovering what human divinity means and the ability to express divinity in this three-dimensional world is freedom. Uh, it's through the freedoms that we have of creativity and expression that we're able to, to share our divine our imagination, our creativity, our innovations, uh, our love, our forgiveness. Those are all functions uh, that are are expressed in freedoms, and when those freedoms are denied, now how do we live our divinity in in a society that doesn't allow that? So, so whatever this new government is that is emerging has to reflect the emergence of human divinity, as we're seeing it, and the spiritual values that come with that. And I think that's a part that a lot of people aren't. You're not going to hear that in the presidential debate, but yeah. I think that's a lot of, of what's happening here. Well, this is not just about denying freedom or divinity. What it is about is that uh, it is manipulating and changing the ideas. The, um, that's why you and I have had these conversations about the importance of the media and the fact that there needs mm -hmm. to be a major, very high, sophisticated, high quality kind of of uh, out of uh, industry almost a small industry to start with 
that is trying to build alternative pictures and images and po of possibilities of what this new world is. Because all of the other things are derivative of or in clearly influenced by whether it's politics and economics and all the other things that you talked about are driven. I mean, the whole thing is an information system, okay? And so uh, you, you only know what you've been heard or what you've read or some of the kind of things. And so how that system is uh, control or it's not so much control, but the orientation of that system and whether it's interested in and openness and freedom and new ideas and other kind of stuff, or whether it's trying to drive you down a dystopian kind of technocratic kind of road, really, really is at the center of where this goes and how it goes. And so we really need to get something going on a new track. Well, this, I think it's a, it is, it's not a peripheral conversation. It's front and center. Do you, have we outgrown the need for a Supreme leader? is the question that we're asking ourselves. Oh, yeah, as, yeah, as, as well, a sure. The practical problem is in the present system, and that's the system you're talking about that's got a supreme leader, there is nobody that gets to that level that is not compromised. The, the system has got to completely just, just implode uh, and so that you can build a new one. And so I don't think it's you have a supreme leader at all. Uh, and certainly not in, in the terms that we're familiar with, because, like I say, they're all compromised. And the decision that Americans make about a new president is uh, the bad, whatever they think is the best of two not very good choices, almost always, uh, yeah. if you really spend a whole lot of time looking in deeply into the thing. And maybe there's some incremental value to getting you going in one way or another, but there is, uh, this is all very compromised. So as we, we watch this implosion that is happening, you know, you mentioned Martin Armstrong a lot, and this, I'll, I'll just stop with this. And he talks about uh, things coming and glued around the year 2027. Mm -hmm. Do you, and from what I'm seeing, the momentum is so great and things are happening so quickly. I don't know that we'll last until 2027. Yeah. What, yeah, what do you what think he, about that? What he says is that there's a global civil war between 2025 next year and 2027. Ah. And that after 2027, what you get is essentially a breakup of a lot of the political systems uh, and all the separatist movements all around the world and everything gain momentum maybe the answer to solve one of the great biblical mysteries you look from a, a historic perspective not a religious perspective but a historic perspective of what we can call ancient remote viewers prophets looking into the future they identify very clearly two great wars happening in the middle east and they give the names of the countries that are involved the first of those wars is happening right now and the, the names of the countries are right on i mean it is eerily uncanny how accurate they are there's a second larger war that involves uh russia china iran the mystery is nowhere in any of those texts is there any mention of America or the United States of America during the time of these wars? And it may be because America does not exist as the union that we know right now. Doesn't mean they just announced last week they're American troops. We got boots on the ground in Israel right now. They they came out with that last week. I, I did not know that they were there beyond an advisory capacity. I knew that. So we will probably be involved, but we may not be involved as uh as a nation, the way that we know the United States of America right now. So, yeah, well, let's just side this up and say there's really good news on the back end of this thing because yeah. when in the world have um, anybody had a chance to redesign a whole new system? We'll, we'll all have to, in one way or another, answer the question do we love ourselves enough That's to create right. the world and to create the nations that our hearts know are possible? Uh, that honor our humanness and what it means to be the, the new human and that honor our, the freedoms 
uh, that come with with yeah. walking this earth. Yeah, and, it, and and it's about who you think you are. You know, that's uh, and and whether it's driven from the outside or whether you have touched down to the essence of who you are and that you see yourself in a whole new way. So like I like you say, yeah. let's uh, talk about that maybe next time. So thank you all. I hope you'll check us out at arlingtoninstitute.org. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, John, for the conversation. Take care, everyone.